We are going to look at a functional simulation in Quartus. To do that, I'll be using the MyUni apps. I'm using the Firefox web browser because that allows me to work inside the browser without having to install an external Citrix receiver. I go to the desktops up here, not, not the apps, but the desktops, and I select the Fiat Student desktop here. It does take a while to come up, but once it's ready, I can click on here, type in Quartus, Quartus Prime 18.1 desktop application. I run this. And I'm in Quartus now. So the first thing we do is create a new project. If I want the project uh, well firstly the working directory we do not want the c drive we need to save it somewhere else i've created a folder under my uh, personal drive what's the name of this project we can call it what we like Whatever we choose here, though, is by default going to be the name of the top-level entity. We can, of course, change the top-level entity separately, but I'm just going to have um, fun sim test for short, functional simulation test. And we need to remember the name of our top-level module here. Go to next, empty project. No need to add any more files. We're going to be creating them. If we're going to be using the board, we do need to select the right FPGA. And one way of doing this is by clicking on board and it's got the DE1 SOC board down here and that's the correct FPGA device, etc. But because I like to save time and the Cyclone 5 has a long compilation time, I'm going to choose a very simple FPGA to speed things up. Maybe a Max 2 FPGA and the pin count well the smaller the better we're not going to be doing anything fancy and we want the simulations to be fast so somewhat arbitrarily i'm just going to choose this guy here and go on to next for simulation we want to select model sim altera this combination so altera is the before intel bought them out altera was the big company that made the boards we're using, etc. Model Sim is made by another company, and the full Model Sim simulator is a lot more powerful, more expensive, etc. Um, Altera have licensed a, a cheaper version, so to speak, and this is the Model Sim Altera that comes with the Quartus light that we will be using here. And we want it in Verilog HDL. Go on to next. And finish, we're done. The next thing we do is we create a new document, a very log file. And this will be our top level module. We're not going to be doing anything fancy, so we just need a single module. What's the name of our top level module? Well, we'll if we've forgotten, it's over here, fun sim test module fun sim test and let's just say it's got um, a b c as inputs and output e not very complicated end module in here i want to describe some combinational logic the easiest way is simply using an assign statement. So I can have assign E is equal to, I don't know, A and B exclusive ord with C. When I'm done, I can uh, save it or I can just press the start compilation button and it will ask me whether or not I want to save it first. So yes, save the changes. It's proposing the module name to be the same as the file name, which is great. Down here it says add file to current project. It's important that this remains ticked. 
when we hit the compile button, Quartus is going to compile all the files in the project. So you can split your modules up across different files, but all those files need to be in your project so that when you press compile, Quartus knows to check all those files, compile everything in those files and link them together. Click save. And now Quartus goes through doing its uh, compilation. Even though I selected a very straightforward FPGA, it's still going to take some time to do this. We notice here that the timing analyzer is unhappy and that's because we've provided no timing information. At the moment we're not worried about timing information and until we look at flip-flops we don't have to worry about this. Everything else is looking good. We check down here for the messages and although there's a range of messages here we can filter through them so firstly, no errors, that's good. Uh, we've got these warnings, so we don't have pin assignments, but we're not going to put this on the board, so that's okay. We don't have clocks to find in the design, that's partly why the timing analyzer is unhappy, but we're not using flip-flops, we don't have clocks, so we don't have to worry about that either. Um, and these other messages uh, are pretty benign. We don't have to worry about those. First thing to do is have a look to make sure that we wrote our Verilog correct correctly. Uh, register transfer level viewer. Bring this up. Make it nice and big. And here we go. Our Verilog code has been written out for us in terms of actual logic gates. Here's an AND gate. Here's an exclusive OR gate and it corresponds precisely with what we wrote in our Verilog code. If we look over here at our code, there's the AND gate and there's the exclusive OR gate. To do a functional simulation, we need to write a test bench to generate signals for A and B and C so that we can then in ModelSim see the signals going in and the signal coming out. To do this, I first create a new Verilog file, double click, module, test, and it takes no inputs or outputs because it's a test bench, it's isolated. The very first thing I do is I need to bring in the module I created. So I created this guy here. To remind me what it is, I can cut and paste it briefly. For the inputs, I want them to be registers because I need to be able to drive them. I'm going to be a little bit fancy here. I'm going to declare a single 3-bit register. Rather than declaring A, B and C separately, I'm going to group them together into a single register, which I'm going to call IN and the output needs to be assigned to a wire, so wire out. Now I can go to the store and buy a FunSim test chip, call it FRED, and the input A is going to be connected to, now it's up to us whether we want to use the least significant or the most significant bit here. I'm going to do the most significant bit Input B is going to be the middle bit of IN and input C is going to be the least significant bit. And now I've wired it up, except I forgot the output. So the output E is going to go to OUT. And that's looking good, so I can delete this. Now we've wired up our chip that we want to test we need to generate test signals for it. So initial begin, end, and while I'm here, end module. To generate my signals, then the easiest is to just have a for loop. That's mainly why I made the input an 3-bit um, register. 
although there are other ways of doing it. And again, there are different ways of doing it. If I declare integer i out here, then inside here I can do for i equals naught, i less than or equal to 7, i equals i plus 1, begin. And I assign in to the value of i. I then wait 10 units of time. And there's nothing else I need to do that's generated my signals for me. I do need to add an end statement here to go with the corresponding begin statement here. And it's always good practice to have a time scale statement up here. So time scale and one nanosecond, one picosecond is fine for these toy problems. The one nanosecond tells us what the default units are. So a hash 10 means a delay of 10 default units. In this case, that will be 10 nanoseconds. The one picosecond is the resolution of the Verilog simulator. The Verilog simulator cannot simulate arbitrary periods in time. It needs a, a smallest, a, a quantum of time, and this will be one picosecond. So every picosecond, the simulator is going to work out what all the signals are in the circuit. When I go to save it for the first time, I get to change its name. Let's change its name to test dot v and I actually to be pedantic do not want it part of my project yes it will still be stored in my project directory as a file there so it's tucked away nicely if it was part of my project then every time I press the compile button in Quartus it's going to compile this as well but this doesn't actually get synthesized so it's just inefficient to do that so I click I, I remove it from my project by unclicking the checkbox. And when I go to save it for the first time, I get to change its name. Let's change its name to test.v. And I actually, to be pedantic, do not want it part of my project. Yes, it will still be stored in my project directory as a file there, so it's tucked away nicely. If it was part of my project, then every time I press the compile button in Quartus, it's going to compile this as well. But this doesn't actually get synthesized, so it's just inefficient to do that. So I click, I, I remove it from my project by unclicking the checkbox and press save here. To do a functional simulation, we first need to tell Quartus that this is our test bench that we want to be used. So we go to Assignments, Settings, under EDA Tool Settings, we find the Simulation setting here. The tool name is already correct because we set that when we created the project and we also set the Verilog language here. The timescale 1 picosecond corresponds with the resolution we set up here for our simulation. And all we need to do is go down to this Compile Test Bench and tell it about our test bench. Click Test Benches. We need to create a new test bench. The test bench name can be anything, but that name by default is used for the top level module, and this one is very important. We see over here in our test bench that the module is called test, and that name has to be the same as the name that we use here. We want to run the simulation until uh, we've finished changing all the different inputs here. And we need to tell it what file to use. Where, where can it find this module test? We do that by clicking the three dots here, selecting. Now we save this in test.v, so we open that. We're not yet done. We have to press add. And we have it down here. So everything's looking good. I press OK. I press OK. And I press OK. We then cross our fingers and we go up to Tools, Run Simulation Tool, and the functional simulation is called RTL Simulation in Quartus. So we hit that, and now Model Sim is going to go through and compile our code. And if everything works, 
we should get up some waveforms. And this is all looking good. It's always good practice to have a look at this window down here. You can change its size, it's a bit tricky, so do not put your cursor here. If you get those four arrows, that's for moving the location of the window. Instead you want to go up a little bit higher till you get just these up and down arrows and then you can move this transcript window to make it a bit larger. So looking back up we see we've got zero errors, zero warnings which is what we really want and uh, that's the same when we go up further too so all's looking good. If there is a problem, if these displays don't turn out the way you want them to be, then look very closely at the transcript window to see if there's any warnings going on somewhere. By the way, if you ever mess up the layout of your screen, you can go to Layout, Reset, and that will lay things out by default. If we look here over on the right at our waveforms, then this doesn't look quite right. We're, we're expecting many more things. But instead of panicking, we look down and we see, oh, that's just the tail end of the simulation. There's lots of stuff there. So what can we do? Well, that's when some of these buttons up here are very useful. This zoom button here, zoom full, if we click this, then we get to see the entire simulation period and things are looking a lot better. Another trick is we can pop out this window here, I hope, and move it along here and make it full, in fact just make it full screen. And so now we can view our waveform and I can do another zoom full so you can see it a bit nicer. At the moment, the test input signal is collapsed. If I press the plus button, then I can see the individual wires. Remember, oops, remember that we have the input we declared as being three bits. So I've got bit two, bit one, and bit zero. Model Sim can show us the individual wires like this, and so we see that bit zero starts off low, goes high here, comes back low, etc. I just changed the color to red for you, so that's bit zero, it starts off zero, goes up to one, etc. At the top is a three bit number, so of course you can't display that graphically as such, but what Model Sim does is it displays this by putting the actual number inside these transitions here and you can if you do it yourself and zoom in you'll be able to see that there's a, a, a sort of a divide between these two so that shows us that the input goes from 000 here to 001 at 10,000 picoseconds which agrees with our code we said that we wanted a delay of 10 nanoseconds and so that's exactly when the input is changing here. So this displays our input. As for the output here, if I right click on it, go to properties, go to wave color and pick your favorite color. Then this is the output of our device you should be able to take the logic circuit and work out the timing diagram yourself and make sure that the output you get agrees with this blue trace over here.